Back in 2017, I did an experiment on the conversion of red phosphorus to its white allotrope. It was only a small scale test run and only had a yield about 75%. The worst part of the original setup was it inevitably involved the destruction of the reaction vessel. Also, leave hundreds of pieces of broken glass which had to be later removed manually. So, this time I scale up the reaction, come up with a new design for the reaction vessel that can be used for multiple times, and had an overall conversion rate over 90%. Since the starting material white phosphorus is very precious within the amateur chemistry community, having a good yield is essential for the reaction to be doable. And of course I didn't come up with that setup on the first trial. I had about dozens of failures, broke god knows how many glasswares, went through nearly half pound of precious red phosphorus, even had a very close call with a mini version of the world's most notorious incendiary weapon going all over my face. Fine, this is the contractor version. I won't be including the part where I failed miserably and only show you the successful trial. If you want to see those failures, I will be including them in the extended version, where I will explain why they failed and how I eventually come up with the final design of the reaction vessel. Link in the description. Okay, without further ado, let's jump right into it. I loaded 15 grams of red phosphorus into a 100 ml Jodo flask. A distillation adapter was attached to the flask, secured by the metallic clamp, as plastic ones were melted under such intense heat. The other end of the distillation adapter was submerged with water. Since white phosphorus is highly pyrophoric, which means it will self-ignite upon air exposure. Also, make sure the water is not contaminated with alkaline hydroxide. In the end of the day, no one wants a bunch of phosgen gas floating around. It's also nice to have a lab jack, although it is not absolutely necessary. Having one around in this case would definitely help improving the fuel efficiency, as well as shortening the reaction time. However, there will be a loss of yield during the initial state, as a small portion of phosphorus will react with oxygen in the flask to form phosphor pentoxide which is a white smoke in the flask. As heating continues, the phosphopentoxide smoke will gradually fade out thanks to its hydroscopic property and its reaction with water. Thus, it will not add as impurity to the final product. However, one way that can prevent this loss of yield is to replace the air in the flask with an inert gas such as nitrogen and argon. I didn't bother because I didn't have any of the gas on hand and uh, this level of yield loss was acceptable to me. This apparatus adopted the key feature of the original setup I came up two years ago. Note that the conversion of red phosphorus to white phosphorus is reversible, which means the forward reaction was ceased to proceed at the equilibrium point and the result in a huge loss of yield. Having the opening of the flask tilted downwards allows the product to be separated from the reactant as well as the heating source. This minimizes the reverse reaction to the greatest extent. It's also advised to cover the apparatus with aluminum foil as white phosphorus can be converted back to red phosphorus under UV exposure. I'm not covering it up due to obvious demonstration purpose. This also explains the yellowish look of my product due to the slight contamination of red phosphorus on the surface. Okay, now let's talk about the chemistry part of this reaction. Red phosphorus exists as an amorphous network, somewhat resembles the structure of a polymers. Upon heating, the individual atoms break free from the network and forms into a tetrahedral shape structure. Another thing to pay close attention to where deploying this setup is the water level in the receiving beaker regarding to the position of the end of the distillation adapter. And this much water showing the clip is way too much. Well, the good thing was that I realized this could be very problematic and removed the excess water before anything catastrophic happened. And I will explain why just in a second. This reaction took an hour to complete. 
and despite the good results, I still believe there are a lot of room for improvement. Once the burner is removed, the hot gas inside of the apparatus will rapidly contract, and the water will be pushed into the apparatus by a high atmospheric pressure. And this can be very problematic if there's too much water. Although lab glass are made of polycyclic glass that are designed to withstand thermal shock, it is, however, without a doubt going to shard into a million pieces if the water gets to the part that was exposed to direct flame. The ideal water level should be just enough to submerge the end of the distillation adapter. After everything cools back down to room temperature, the apparatus is dismantled and placed in a beaker filled with distilled water. The beaker is then placed on a hot plate and gradually bring up the temperature. White phosphorus has a very low melting point compared to other allotropes in the phosphorus family. Thanks to its low surface tension, everything should clump together into a big nugget. To be honest, without having to do the laboring intensive glass removing process, everything felt a lot neater this time. Unfortunately, it didn't quite fit into the bottle that I intend to store it in. So I had to break up with a spatula. What I found interesting was, despite its waxy looking appearance, it was actually pretty crispy. And honestly, I was shocked to see how good the result was. It produced over 14.2 grams of product, which represents astonishing 95% of the yield. A big thank you goes to all my supporters on Patreon. Everyone support me on Patreon and get to see my video 24 hours before I put it on YouTube. Anyone support me with $3 or more will have their name listed as you see here. I really appreciate any of your support.